Next, we're going to review the left atrial anatomy. Again, we can see that the chamber that's closest to the spine is the left atrial chamber. It receives blood from the lungs through the pulmonary veins, which we can see join the left atrium at its posterior aspect on either side. The anatomy of the pulmonary veins is very variable. Uh, we can see usually there's a superior and inferior pulmonary vein on each side. In this particular case, we can see on the right side that there's a superior pulmonary vein which drains into the superior aspect. And then as we go down, there's also an inferior pulmonary vein which drains inferiorly on the right side. And then in between, we have kind of a uh, intermediate pulmonary vein which drains also into the left atrium. If we look on the right, um, excuse me, on the left side of the heart, again, we can see that there's a superior pulmonary vein which drains into the left atrium and then inferior pulmonary vein, which also drains into the left atrium. Now, it turns out that the orifice of these pulmonary veins and their junction with the left atrium becomes important in patients with arrhythmia because it is around these areas that many of the um, arrhythmia electrical impulses start from. So when they go in to do RF ablation, it's important for them to know the location and size of those pulmonary venous ostia. So the left atrium receives blood through the pulmonary veins. There's paired sets on either side, and the anatomy is variable. The other important feature of the left atrium is the left atrial appendage. If we look on the left side of the heart, we can see that there's an outpouching of the left atrium, which kind of wraps around a part of the left heart. And you can see a little bit of irregularity, somewhat trabeculations uh, in that area. This is a part of the heart which, especially in patients with atrial fibrillation, gets very turbulent or sluggish flow and will be the first nidus for thrombus formation in patients such as this. Now the problem with thrombus formation in the left atrial appendage that is, is that if that thrombus breaks free, it's free to go straight through to the systemic circulation and then can produce things such as infarcts uh, in the brain. So any type of scan that you're reading, it's always useful to take a peek at the left atrial appendage and see if you see a thrombus in there because that's going to be an important observation to make. So the left atrium receives blood through the pulmonary veins. It has the left atrial appendage, which can be a site of thrombus formation, and the blood subsequently flows through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. You can somewhat s make out the shadow of the mitral valves. Um, they're fairly well seen in this particular case, although frequently they will not be well seen depending on how successful your cardiac gating is. Uh, the other important feature of the left atrium is just to remember that there's this interatrial wall which separates the left atrium from the right atrium and that there is a fossa ovalis there that could be incomplete and you can have a patent foramen ovale. So if you see a blush of contrast extend from the left atrium into the right atrium, uh, that can be evidence on a cardiac CT that there is a defect there. So that's something that you always want to take a look for. So this has been a review of the left atrial anatomy.